We're going to solve this integral, this antiderivative, dx over 1 plus root x all to the fourth. If you're not careful, this could scare you. It doesn't quite look like many of the things you're used to. And you might be tempted to use a u substitution, and you'd find very quickly that it doesn't match the normal flow for a u substitution. There's nothing to cancel out once you take the du. But maybe we should go with our gut. Let's, in fact, go with our instinct, and let's let u be the thing you would guess it to be, the thing inside the parentheses. Right? u is usually the thing inside the parentheses or under the square root or in the exponent of e, that sort of thing. This would make du the derivative. Well, the derivative of 1 is 0. And the derivative of root x, you could think of this as x to the 1 half power and use the chain rule. I prefer to remember the derivative of a square root is 1 over 2 times the square root. And I need to tack on dx when I'm doing this differential. So you'd get this same result if you use the power rule and then rewrote the answer using radical notation. Some people prefer to solve for dx here. If you want to rewrite this equation, solving for dx, multiplying both sides by a 2 root x, we'd have 2 root x du. This is equal to dx. And what we can do, we can make our substitution now. I know what the dx is in the numerator. I know dx to be 2 root x du, so I have my du in there. I need that du differential if I'm going to do this substitution. And in the denominator, 1 plus root x, we called that u, it's still to the fourth. Well, this would be great, except we have x's still. I can't integrate x's if this says du. How do I figure out? what root x is. I have this dangling root x out here. Well, hold on. There's a root x right here. I know what root x is. I'll just solve for it. Just subtract 1 from both sides. u minus 1 is root x. Some people call this a back substitution because I look back and now I'm going to substitute. So I'm going to resubstitute this. It's 2. And if you like, you could even just throw this 2 outside of the integral, right? I can pull constants out front. Root x, I know what this is now. This is u minus 1 times du over u to the fourth. And this is something much more manageable. We can definitely integrate this. In fact, I think the best way to do it would be to split up this fraction. I would just rewrite this as 2 u over u to the fourth and then minus 1 over u to the fourth. This is still times du. And if you like, you could rewrite this without any fractions, just using properties of exponents here. u over u to the fourth, that would be 1 over u cubed. Equivalently, you could write that as u to the mi minus 3. 1 over u to the fourth, that's u to the minus 4. And now we're all ready to do our antiderivative. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So I'll do just that. Minus 3 plus 1. That's a minus 2. I divide by the new power. Minus 4 plus 1. That's minus 3. Divide by minus 3. Every good indefinite integral deserves a plus c at the end. Now I started with x's, I'd like to end with x's. So everywhere I see a u, I'll replace it with what I know u to be. u was 1 plus root x. Okay, so I could rewrite this a number of different ways. Maybe I'll just leave the 2 out front. I'd probably just leave this as a negative 1 over 2. Just rewriting the over minus 2 as minus a half. And I'd rewrite this with a positive exponent in the denominator squared u was 1 plus square root x's. And then same deal here, I'd have minus a third. I'll bring this downstairs to make it a positive exponent. Again, u was 1 plus square root x. And then, hey, there we go. There is a nice antiderivative. You could check if you really, really wanted to, that if you take the derivative of this, you could rewrite it as the original. Hope you enjoyed this video, kind of a wacky integral. Thanks very much for watching till the end. I hope you have a great day.